Hi everyone! Today I'm going to show you how I make little things for a new journal. And I'm using deco foil, which is here, and also some deco glue. I need a paper trimmer, which I have here, and also different types of paper and card. These are all from Hobbycraft because they do these great kind of paper packs with different shades. And this is also vellum paper, which is a transparent one. And this is like a thick marble paper. I also use stencils, I've got a real mixture of them. Some of these big ones for clothes. And then I have this kind of acetate paper, which is already patterned. So in this case, I am setting up a new B5 journal, but that'll be another video. What I'm doing here is just measuring to see what kind of size I need to cut my paper and card and acetate and vellum um, to. So I've got my measurements there and then I'm just gonna trim everything down. I'm also doing some of these clear acetate sheets, which I'm going to decorate with the deco foil stuff. And when it comes to paper trimmers, I personally prefer a guillotine cutter, although I do find they, they're not always as precise because when you put the guillotine down, it can move the paper or the card a little bit, but I do prefer it to the slicey ones or whatever you call them. And I'm just picking some marbled paper. I think I like the look of this one. And I'm just gonna trim that down to size two and probably some pattern paper. Just experimenting here really. I'm not sure what I'm gonna end up with, but I'm just playing with the different papers and different techniques. And I love this vellum paper. It's got a really smooth finish to it. And it looks really good when you put it into a journal. just picking a mixture of colors through each of these new pads and this is a really nice vellum which has a very light colored pattern on it I'm just trimming everything down to size based on my measurement earlier but I will also measure it up in the notebook as well to make sure they're not too big because it's kind of annoying when they stick out a bit just trimming a couple of sheets at a time and I'm just adding lots of different sheets here to play with because I know some of them I'll probably mess up or I won't like the finished design just giving myself a selection and using the top sheet there that I've measured out to measure up the other pieces and chopping it down to size. There you go. Now there's two ways to apply foil. One is with the glue. You see this is all from the Deco Foil brand and I've got some brushes here and we'll also use stencils and things too. All the instructions are on the back of the glue in case you can't follow what I'm doing. So this is the tub glue and with this you apply this with brushes, you can use it with the stencils and you can be kind of more freehand with it as you can see I am with the paintbrush. And this is just really random, it doesn't look particularly good now but it will look better once you see the foil applied on top. I'm just doing some dots here and like I said I don't know how these are going to turn out. I have done foiling before but it's been a really long time since I've done it again. So we'll just see what we come up with. Like I said, I think you can try this with regular PVA glue, but I've just bought the branded stuff, the deco foil stuff, because it is made for this. And this is the precision pen. And with this, you can add more details with it if you don't have a fine brush. And remember to take the protective cover off. And with this, you can do little darts, for example, or you can do more fine work than with the stuff in the top. I've got both of these just so we can experiment and see what it looks like. And I'm just dotting down little dots on the vellum to see what we end up with. And then I'm also covering the gold parts of this marble paper. And we're going to foil on top of it and see what it looks like when it's done. So this is much easier to do like this than I think with the paintbrush. Oh, then again, if you're quite careful with the paintbrush, I'm sure you could do that too. And now I'm going to use some of my stencils. These stencils are from a mixture of places, from eBay, from AliExpress. And if you can wait, they're a lot cheaper to order from China. 
in batches than buying one or two stencils, which can add up quickly. And it does make the paper curl, but it's fine because we can flatten that back down again once it's dried. And this is a super pretty stencil. I can't remember where this is from, guys. I think it's a clothing one, actually. And it looks like a mandala or a flower. This is another clothing stencil, like a leopard print one. I like this. This is for use for jeans. I mean, I don't know. I personally wouldn't wear jeans with a leopard print on down the side, but each to their own. And this is like a zebra print one. So you can use whatever you want. You can actually cut your own stencils too. You don't have to pre-buy them, buy pre-made ones. You can make your own, just be creative. And just trying the dots again, not very original, I know, but just playing around to see what I end up with. Really, really like this paper from Hobbycraft. It's vellum and I think it's fairly good value. I think it's about four pounds. I'm just trying some swirls out there as well. I've done some lightning bolts on the pink and I've got this squared pink one, not sure what to do. I'll just try little lines and see what happens. And then once everything has dried the glue, you can then use foil sheets. And this is one from Ranger. And this one is a press on one, so you just rub it on. You don't need to use heat or anything. So you see what I'm doing? I'm just putting pressure on there with my finger and then ripping off. And the effect is actually pretty decent. The only thing with these, the sheets aren't very big, so it's not gonna last you a huge amount of time, but I'm impressed that it, you don't need any other tools with this other than the glue and your hand. So as you can see, the glue dries clear. Now try with the black, this is less successful. I think it looks a bit weird. I'm still, I'm still making it though, but I, as soon as I started, I thought, uh-uh, this is not for me, but you know, it was worth a go. It just doesn't look, quite look right and it's not really stuck to all the pieces of glue either. So this is one for the bin. And then this is the clear glue on that foil. So now I'm using the glue. Oh, another tip. Don't forget that when you're foiling, you always put the foil, the pretty side up. It's not the pretty side down, which is what you instinctually want to do. It is the pretty side up. And this one looks really great. I really, really like that effect on top of the gold. It does stick up out of it, it's a bit bumpy, but I mean, I really like the way that looks. And I'm trying some more of the multicolor foil sheets. This is still the press on method using the glue. There is another way to do this if you own a laser printer, which I don't. You can use a laser printer and a laminator, which gives really good effects, but I don't have a laser printer. And this is the laminator method. This time I'm using the Deco Art range. And this comes in a roll. You get a couple of sheets inside the roll and then you just press on top like this, cut it down to size. Again, the glue has already dried on this. And then you put it between some parchment paper to protect it. This is just greaseproof paper I'm using, which I use for everything. And we're gonna run it through a laminator. This is just a cheapy laminator I've had for absolutely years. And then let's see, ta da! I think it looks awesome. I like this method. I'm surprised by how well it's actually worked out. Look at that. That looks really good, don't you think? And this is the other one, the uh, leopard spots one. Cutting that down to size, not waste anything. And running it through the laminator again. There's no heat settings on this, it's just one setting. Like I said, it's a very cheap old laminator I'm using and just greaseproof paper with the, woo! Really, really, really like the effect with this. It's kind of addictive. And also you can buy these. I'm mixing up my old ones here just to see what happens, you know, waste not, what not. But you can always use up uh, any little bits and bobs you've got left. Just see what it looks like. Just ripping that off here, see? I quite like it, it's quite a mixed design. I'm just using all these little pieces because there's areas here which haven't been used. Oh, I'm just rubbing that. And just doing another little piece here with the press-on foil. Not too pleased with this one, so then I abandoned it. It doesn't look great. And here are the finished sheets, just showing you there what they look like. So I really like some of these. Next up, I'm going to make a jelly cover and to show you some of the different ones I've got there. 
So I've got the star one, a kind of mixed one, and this pink one. And these, if you just search for transparent leather, I don't know why they call it leather, but transparent sheets. So first I'm measuring up my notebook and I'm going to draw two lines down the center to mark out the spine. It just helps it fold. And on the other side there. So I decided to go for this spotty one. What I like about this is that it's nice and soft. What I don't like about it is that it really stinks. But it is nice and soft and therefore quite easy to sew. And just trimming that down. There's no high tech method to this. If you buy one of Etsy, they'll obviously make it very, very well. But this is just one I'm using myself. So I'm not too bothered about it being completely perfect. So I'm just gonna give it some pockets on either side. I need that in order to put the notebook in there and also to secure things inside the notebook. If I wanna put any stickers or rulers or anything in there. So just measuring that down to just about the right measurement. Also, you can use any color thread that you like down the middle. I've just gone for black because that, that was what was in my machine and I don't mind it. Just trimming it down further. Do give yourself some space, don't do it too tight because then you won't be able to fit the notebook in. And I'm just gripping that with some of these clips. Just trim it down a little bit more. And then I'm just running a stitch all the way round. I'm going round all the way, quite fairly close to the edge. And if you've measured everything properly, then your notebook should fit. And it shouldn't be too loose either. So you're running it through. Sewing the PVA is very strange. Just kind of take your time. Don't push it through. You don't want to break the needle. Or, ah! Yeah, run out of thread. Don't you hate it when you're in the middle of sewing and you run out and then you have to do all the... Re there you go. Just re-thread it again. Should have thought of that before I started. And then re-thread the sewing machine. Do all this. Let's go again. I'm taking it all the way round. Remember to double stitch at the end. So everything's secure. I'm just taking it all the way around to make it neat as well. You can always unpick it and do it again if you do make a mess out of it, which I did. Now I'm just going to stick my notebook in there to check that it fits. Just has been a bit of a squeeze at first. I think it fits rather well. Now another thing that you can do, which I don't think I'll do in the future actually, but this time is I used a, a leather punch and you can use that to add a tie. So you can like a band to put around the notebook. So you can make a hole in the back and then put some elastic around there. And then, ta-da, there you go, that's the finished thing. I'm just fiddling around there, making sure it's double knotted. And then once everything is measured out, you can then trim it down. Oh, just want to show you how I did my nails for this video. No particular reason, cup of coffee, and just use some glittery gel polish. Because regular polish just doesn't last on me at all. This is just a random brand that I bought from Amazon. I had to go for something festive, even though it's not Christmas anymore. I thought I'd go for something sparkly and red. I have no nail polish application skills. I need to tell you that now. But I don't think they look too bad considering I'm really, really bad at doing my nails. And generally this kind of gel polish will last me about a week, a week and a half, if I'm lucky. <laughs> But you know, at least I've not had to go to a salon. And I'm kind of saving money this way by doing it at home. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed my video of how I make little accessories for a new journal. And I'll see you again soon. Remember to subscribe. Bye. <laughs>